Hey guys, welcome to Slash Rex Games. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a custom high school table based on time. And um, the location for this tutorial is a box factory. And the main consideration on everyone's minds in such a location is safety. That's why our favorite top down uh, protagonist here is wearing a hot hat. Yeah. So um, in this mini game, basically what one's got to do is uh, navigate through this little maze of boxes, well, it's like a pathway of boxes, and get to the checkered line right over here. And uh, notice here's the time, and it hasn't started because we haven't moved yet. As soon as we push A to go forward, it's going to start counting down. Let's do this. A. We're going to navigate our way, bumping into stuff, you know, simulate a real life experience in a box factory, bumping into everything, finding our way through the path, over the little bridge to the other side. I'm pretty close here. Oh, we're going to bump into a few more things. There we go. Make this realistic. Oh, no. Oh, well, we've taken the wrong... Oh, no. Let's turn around. Keep going. And then when we near the exit, right over here. And bam. As soon as we cross the finish line, it's now asking us for our name. So we're going to say... Uh, pff, uh, Tom. All right. Say OK. 27 seconds. All right. So now we look. 27 seconds. Oh no, Tom is right at the bottom with 27.13 seconds. Notice here that Billy has 18 seconds, and then as we go down, we get the worst and worst time. Now, this is based on least time is best. The fastest we get from the start to the finish, the better. And uh, ultimately, what it's doing is it's taking that time, converting it all to seconds. So if we took a few minutes, it's going to take those minutes times each minute by 60, add those to the actual seconds that are left, and then uh, it's going to compare it to all these other ones, also converting them all to seconds. And then it's going to, you know, reorder this list in whichever way is this right. Now, this tutorial is very much similar to my other custom high schools tutorial. The coding is nearly exactly the same. So I'm not going to be explaining a lot of the concepts involved. So if you don't understand anything, please go to my other tutorial and check that one out first. Okay, let's go back and let's, let's go dive right into this coding over here. Okay, so um, the sprites here, we've just got some world sprites, so just some objects and stuff to make the minigame look cool. We've got the finish line, and uh, we've got the player as well as some boxes that move around and do stuff. But that's not our concern. Uh, rooms here, we've just got the game world and the scores room, pretty much the same as that other tutorial. Objects, object player. Now, what he does is he just, I don't know, giving, making sure he points towards the mouse, uh, make sure that uh, we get his name eventually and he's active so that he can move and then in the step here if he's active yes he is look towards the mouse if he's pushing a now notice here as soon as we push a if the controller is not going so it's false then it's going to start now remember in that counter uh, controller tutorial um, we pushed a button to start it in this case the button is a and it's not the, the clickable button as it was there same concept the timer in this tutorial is exactly the same code as it is in the other one um, so we start the timer, do some speed things here, direction, image angle, blah, 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 it's just going in the direction he's facing. Then uh, just some, if he comes into contact with some of these solids, he's just going to bounce against it, it's pretty simple. And then when he comes into contact with the finish line, here, we're going to first check if the count, if the, the timer is still counting. That means we're still uh, active, we're still in game, we're trying to get to the end. Then we're going to set it to false, because now it's over. Then we're going to grab the variables of object counter controller seconds, minutes, and hours, and we're going to set them in the globals. Now, um, if you haven't seen that count up tutorial, you should really go check it out. Otherwise, you're not going to really know what's going on, but I'll breeze over it quickly. Count of controller in the create here, um, we set everything to, to zero, seconds, minutes, hours. These are local variables, and uh, we tell it not to start out, because we don't want to start the game and then it starts, because we want you know the player to look around a little bit before he actually begins. And um, as soon as that says, hey, we can uh, start counting, then it's going to uh, increase by 1 divided by room speed. This, just make sure that it increases by a real second. Um, and that goes up and sets the minutes and hours and so on, and then that just draws it to the screen. There we go. So once we hit the finish line, it's going to grab those local uh, seconds, minutes, and hours variables, and it's going to um, create global ones now. It's going to store them in the global seconds. Now we can use that any way we want, really. And um, now we're setting active to false because we don't want the player to move around anymore. And uh, get name is true, right? Remember it was true in the create. So now we're saying, well, if it's true, then uh, name equals uh, get string in synchronous. So we don't want the game to freeze. We still want those boxes to move around, make it look like uh, the factory is still working even though the player has reached the end. And it's going to bring up a little uh, dialog box that's not going to, as the asynchronous means, it's not going to slow down the game or stop it. 
and the text is going to say uh, enter your name and it's going to have AAA as the string uh, that the player needs to replace. Um, then we set get name to false so this doesn't happen again because remember it's still colliding with the finish line even after it is active. All right. And um, it's going to send out a uh, asynchronous dialog signal and pretty much what we're going to do here, check this out, event, dialog, that's an asynchronous event. If we go add event we say asynchronous dialog, right? So this thing's going to be listening for signals, for all asynchronous dialog signals. And um, this one here we've called name over here, called it name. So if we go to dialog over here, go to some code. Um, here I'm creating a uh, temporary variable called time and basically what we're going to do is we're taking um, the score which is at the top left, uh, well which is the time, and we're going to take all those hours, minutes, seconds, convert them all to seconds so that we can use that to compare um, to the other stored variables and values in the uh, current high score table. Um, it's just simpler, otherwise we're going to compare the hours, compare the minutes, compare the seconds. Oh, psh, instead of doing three comparisons, we can just do one. So here it's taking all the globals, the global seconds, minutes, and hours, and it's converting them all to seconds. So it's taking the ones out of seconds, it's taking the minutes, times them by 60, taking the hours, times them by 3600. And that will ultimately give us um, the same value, but just all in seconds. Okay, then the next thing here, we're creating a temporary variable called ID, and it's going to find um, the next incoming signal, right? It's going to find the ID, and uh, if the ID is name, remember, we sent out that asynchronous signal and we gave it the name, uh, well, the ID name, and uh, if it can find that, then it's going to say, uh, oh, well, if the status, right, if we, uh, status means did the user click OK or cancel, so if, uh, if we can find this, if it's OK, if the user clicks OK, then carry on, um, and then here, if uh, the user actually put it in their name and it wasn't blank, then carry on further. Then it's uh, it's going to grab that name in the result. See that saying result is not equal to blank. So result here is equal to something. So grab that result value. And um, then what we're going to do is open the the any called scores.any. Now this is stored in uh, your C users and then your your username app local and then your name of this uh, current uh, studio project. In this case, it's time-based score. It's going to be here called scores any. Notice how here I've saved the position in the high scores table, then the name and the time. Now notice all the times here are in seconds, right? Because we're going to be storing them as seconds and then the high score table is just going to display them as hours, minutes, seconds. And then, you know, the player won't even notice that it's just a quick uh, conversion right at the end. Okay, um, so what we're doing here is we're opening up that scores on any. We're starting at zero and we want to keep it going until it's less than 10, so it goes through 10 uh, items every time i increments by one. Um, so the global scores array i0 is going to be the name, right? It's going to read the name over here. It's going to go to this one first. Let's put this on the side. Let's make this a little shorter so we can see what's going on. Oh, wait, yeah, no, that's not going to work. Um, anyway, so it's going to go to i0, so very first one here, and it's going to read the name. Billy, bam. It's going to read the time of Billy, 18 seconds on the dot, and then it's going to go to the next one, number one. Then it's going to read Bill, then it's going to get 18.1, and so on. It's going to keep doing that until it's full this global score array with all these details. Once we've got the array, we're going to quickly close that any, right? Then we're going to go over here, and we're going to go through that array and see if our time, which was just the player's current time that he just got in now, is less than one of those things. Okay, so start at i again, it said it's a naught, i is less than 10, and then we're going to say if the time variable, which we worked out in seconds, is less than global score array, the current one, so if it's less than the current one there that we've got in our array, then it's going to create a variable called j, set it right to the bottom, make sure j is greater than i, and it's going to move up until they meet. All right, and it's going to set every element to the element before it, and then eventually um, it will replace the, the dual element with this time variable and then everything will be bumped down effectively. Um, I explain this in greater detail in my pre other tutorial, so check that out if you don't understand. Um, then here, this is where it um, removes the duplicate, and then effectively at the end of here, everything is bumped down and the new um, element has been put into the array. Now once that's down, then we can update the any file with this new array. So the any file here it just looks the same as it did when we did this first thing. Um, 
but over here now we've got updated with the same values as the array. So that's exactly what we're doing here. We're just rewriting it. It's like it, you delete it kind of, and then it just puts all the array, uh, the elements in their correct order. Then what it's going to do here is it's going to go to um, room scores, right over there. Going to room scores, and that's where it will display anything. So when it gets to that room, then it's going to take this array, which is effectively the same as the uh, scores.ini, and it's going to convert that into a format that is pleasing to the eye, one can say. So it'll be ha it'll have hours, um, colon, minutes, colon, seconds, and then decimal, you know, milliseconds. So let's go to uh, object draw uh, scores. Right there, it's just a simple draw event. And um, here we're just setting up some variables where we want the, the scores to be aligned up, um, the font, the aligning, um, just a nice lime kind of color. And then here, check this out. Hours equals global score array I1, all right, and then, oh, well, this isn't a loop, remember, it's going to be doing all those things. It's going to be drawing each and every element in this array in the correct order. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create three variables, hours, minutes, seconds, um, local to this uh, this object draw scores. And it's going to say global.score array I1, so the first element, well, I will be zero, and then number one, which is the time spot, div 3600, because there's uh, 3,600 seconds in an hour, and we're getting the whole number without any remainder. That's why we're using the uh, the div here. Uh, if we didn't use div, we just used a divide sign like that. Um, we'll get decimals and stuff. So we want the whole number of the hours, uh, oh well, of the time component divided by 3,600. Then minutes, global score array I1 again, getting that that time variable of that spot, dividing by 60. All right, 60 um, um, minutes in an hour. Um, okay, here, yeah, minus hours times 60, all right? So we're using div again. So that'll give us the minutes without, you know, after it's, and then once it's got that, you know, it minuses that kind of thing, and that's how you get this. Then seconds is just uh, the remainder. Mod gives you the, the, the remainder of a division. So we're getting that time variable, uh, mod 60, so we'll just get the remainder of those ones. Um, then here, yy plus equals 45. This is just where we want it to be. Draw seconds here, I've just added this just in case you want to say uh, draw seconds equals floor seconds. For example, say you didn't want that decimal place, then you could say floor seconds. But in this case, you know, the, the time to get to the finish line is it's really short, so I'm going to put seconds there, so um, there's milliseconds or so. Then here we're going to draw text, um, i0, so that's the name. First we're going to draw the name of the person, um, then this is the same as the kind of timer right over here. It's, got, it's just determining whether to put a zero um, if the minutes or seconds is less than zero, uh, less than ten. So it'll have zero nine, you know that kind of thing. Um, and it'll keep doing this effectively ten times, and that'll draw up the high scores table as we see when we run it. Um, yeah. So that is it. That's all the code that does this. And let's go play. Let's do this one more time. Okay, so yeah, so when we start moving, as soon as we start moving, there the count up starts, starts counting up, it's timing us now. It's not displaying the milliseconds because we use that uh, that floor, that uh, draw seconds equals floor seconds in the actual timer. But when we get to the end, it's going to be a lot more accurate and it's going to tell the user, oh, exactly how many milliseconds they were. So let's try to do this reasonably quickly, not bumping into anything. Get to the end, and then it's going to come up with a synchronous signal. Time stops, remember? Look at that. Time stops as soon as we're colliding. Um, then uh, enter our, our name. Uh, I don't know, Bobby. Okay. Select OK, and then it's going to send out that signal. Then um, it's going to be listening again for that signal, that dialog signal. Bam. So we look for Bobby. Bobby's right at the bottom with 24 seconds. 0.33. Um, and I, if there was another person down here with like 25, he'd get bumped down and we never shave him again because he's not important. He's no longer a top 10. Um, yeah, so yeah, it draws the name in this column and then um, it draws the time just in this format of uh, hours, minutes, seconds, just like that. And that's effectively how we do a high school table based on time. We just convert the whole lot, the hours, minutes, and seconds, two seconds. Once we've done that, we can compare them and write them up. So, I hope you enjoy this tutorial. I'll be uploading a uh, GMK to Dropbox so that you guys can 
fiddle around with the actual code without having to type it all out. That'll save you a lot of time. Um, if you found this tutorial educational and helpful, please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. Tell your friends, and I'll be back next time for another great Game Maker tutorial. See you guys next time.